Hello and welcome to the 11th insight in the Baselight Beginner video series. We are over halfway through the 20 video series, so if you've been following along, um, I hope you found it helpful so far. Today we're going to be building a film look and we're going to be having a look at some of the other primary grading tools that we can use to enhance our image. The first thing we're going to look at is how to incorporate a LUT into your baseline grading stack. The second thing we're going to look at is how to add a diffusion or a glow to your image. And the third thing that we're going to cover is adding film grain. It's going to be a fun insight today. We're going to build a film look and explore some of these techniques as we go. So to start off this insight, let's talk about LUTs. Okay, so how do we insert a LUT operator? We'll click on our strip, we'll go up to the insert menu, and you can see down here there's a LUT operator. We'll go ahead and click this. If you look up the top left, you can see that the parameters view has changed into our LUT operator interface. Firstly, in the LUT location dropdown, you can see that if your LUT is embedded in your input media, you can select that here. In this case, I'm going to point to a LUT that's on file, so I'll leave this on file. The next step is to select our LUT, so I'm going to go ahead here to the browse menu. You can see that in my TrueLight Cubes folder, I have no LUTs, so I'm gonna navigate through to my desktop. So I've navigated through to my desktop and you can see that we have a log C LUT and an S log three LUT. So this won't actually match the footage that we're working with because we're just working with proxies, but we'll go ahead, select the log C LUT and hit okay. And immediately you can see that there's a change to our image. You can see uh, the LUT file that we're now pointing to. And you can see below here that you can change the input color space and output color space of our LUT. If I go ahead, click our LUT and hit Command F11, we can bypass that to see our before and after. As I mentioned, this is red proxy footage, so this ARRI LUT is not gonna work, but if I was working with ARRI log C footage, I would be getting a better result. Fantastic, we'll go ahead and delete that using the backspace key. The second and third thing that we're gonna cover today is adding a diffusion or glow and adding film grain. So we're gonna build a little film look in our stack here. The first thing I'm gonna do is add a grade layer with the keyboard shortcut P, and I'm gonna to jump to my video grade today. I'm gonna to do some basic adjustments here. I'm gonna lift my gain a touch, lift my midtones a touch, and bring my shadows down, adding a little bit more gamma. Down here in the saturation menu, I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag clockwise to increase the saturation. I'm gonna go ahead, add another layer with the keyboard shortcut P, this time selecting my base grade tool, I'm just gonna go ahead, click and drag the color wheel and just balance the shot out a little bit using the balance tool. While I'm in the base grade tool, I'm gonna to add a little bit of contrast. And I think I'm done. Okay, so hitting Command F11, you can see the before and after. So that's looking fairly balanced. Okay, so the next step here is I'm gonna add my diffusion layer or glow layer. Quite a popular effect when you're looking to build a film look. I'm gonna go ahead and add a third grade layer and I'm gonna jump up to my inside grade operators. Going down to the curve grade tool, which is a tool that I don't often use, I'm gonna go ahead and right click this operator and go change operator type. You can see here that I can replace the curve grade operator with any of these other operators. I'm gonna change this to the diffuse operator. This is the operator that we're gonna use for adding our diffusion glow. So let's start at the top and talk through what these individual sliders mean. So the diffuse slider is our main tool. So we're gonna go ahead and drag this all the way to one. You'll see that nothing happens immediately, but that's because in this tool, we have to actually mix the diffusion into the image. So down in the mix slider, we can go ahead, drag this all the way to one, and you can see we're adding our glow. If we drag this all the way to one, you can also see that we are completely desaturating our image. In some cases, this would be what you want it to do. In our case, it's not. Um, so if we go ahead to the saturation slider and drag this all the way up to one, you can see that our color returns to the image. Okay, so the last slider is this aspect slider. The easiest way to show you what this does is by showing you. So I'm gonna go ahead, drag this all the way to one. When we drag this fully to the right, you can see that the diffusion has a very vertical feel. If we go ahead and drag this all the way from zero to negative one, you can see it's a very horizontal diffusion effect. So this is quite a stylized uh, look, as is the vertical one. So we'll just go ahead and leave this at zero. We'll change the diffuse amount to about half, and we'll also change the mix amount down to about half. And now you can see that if we select our layer three, hit Command F11, that that's adding a considerable amount of glow. In this case, we might actually mix this down a little bit, maybe down to about 
and that's looking quite nice. If we wanted to add some direction to this glow and help the image retain some of its natural sharpness, I can do that with a shape. We are gonna cover how to create shapes later on in the series, so don't worry, we will cover this in more depth shortly. I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard to create my shape. And up in the shape management, I'm going to click quick shape and edge left. You can see that that's created our gradient tool. Now while we're grading and working within Baselight, if we want to adjust our image display, just like adjusting the timeline with our command middle mouse button, clicking and dragging to the left and right, we can do that on the image display as well. So if I go ahead, click our image display while holding down command middle mouse button and dragging, you can see that I can drag it smaller and larger. I can also move around the image display, just holding down the middle mouse button, clicking and dragging. If I ever want to get the image display back to center, I can hit F12. So I'm going to hold down Command, the middle mouse button, and I'm going to click and drag to the left to zoom out a little bit. And using this handle here, I'm going to drag my shape. I'm going to rotate my shape and drag this out a little more. I'm going to hit F12 to center my image display. And I'm going to click my layer 3, hit Command F11 to bypass the layer. So you can see we've created a nice directional glow that's affecting over half of the image in a nice and subtle way. Okay, so I'm happy with our glow and our general level of exposure and contrast. So what I'm gonna do next is add our grain layer. The easiest way to do this is go to the insert menu and go add grain. Look at that, nice and simple. So let's focus on the key sliders of our add grain operator. To demonstrate this clearly, let's drag the intensity all the way up to one and you can see we're starting to get a lovely looking image. Hopefully your first thought was, wow, that is a lot of color. If we go ahead, command, middle mouse button, drag to the right, there is a lot of color going on in this grain. So the first thing we wanna do is remove some of that color. We'll do that by heading over to the film controls and dragging the channel correlation from zero all the way to one. And you can see that that removes any saturation from the grain. Up in the grain controls, you can see that we can change the size of our grain from small to very large, hitting F12 to jump back out. So that's very large, that's very small. So for now, we'll keep it very small. The only other thing that I'm gonna do is change the intensity from 10 down to about 0.4. So again, if I zoom into this image and increase it a little bit more just so you can see it, go ahead and hit play with spacebar you can see that we've added grain successfully to our image. This is definitely too much grain, but I'm adding a little bit more just so that it'll show up on the tutorial, hopefully quite nice and clear. I'm gonna hit F12 to jump back to the main part of the image. So the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click layer three, add a grade layer, add a shape layer with the keyboard shortcut S, and I'm gonna create a little vignette for our main subject here. I'm gonna zoom out on the display using command, middle mouse button, drag to the left, and I'm gonna expand out my shape, jumping down to my grade layer, and then my outside layer, go ahead and reduce some of that balance. Go ahead and reduce some of that feather. I'm gonna go edit my mat tool and just blur that out a ton. And decrease. Okay. So let's play back this final grade. It's looking good. The one thing I might do, we'll just go to layer two. And we'll pump a little bit more coolness into that image and a little bit more contrast. Okay. Okay, and that's a film look using the diffuse operator and the add grain operator. So let's jump up and quickly break down what we did. We started off with our input media we added a basic contrast adjustment using the video grade tool. We added some contrast and color with the base grade operator. We added a bit of diffusion with the diffuse operator. We added a vignette using just a basic shape. And then we added our grain. I hope that was a good introduction to those tools. And I hope it showed you a few more techniques that you can add to your primary grading tool set. For MixingLight.com, I'm Luke Ross.